My name is Connor Barber, and I am a biomechanist at DBC Fitness. Biomechanics is an area I've grown to love learning and teaching about with my background in engineering and my experience in training pro-level athletes, including Amari Stoudemire, as well as having time with players, including Melvin Ingram, Norris Cole, Jalil Okafor, and many others. I'm making these videos to bring a higher standard to trainers and understand the math and physics behind training. So whether you're training Cristiano Ronaldo, the next come up athlete, or your neighbor's grandmother, there's something that can be applied from every one of these videos for your training session. All right, I wanted to dive into a topic that I talked about in the past on Instagram, vectors. Vectors help us define not only how fast or far an athlete is moving, but also in what direction. For instance, I can have one athlete spring down the football field at eight meters per second, and a second running at five meters per second. This is great information to know about their speed, but I know nothing about what direction each athlete is running. Perhaps the first athlete is running upfield and the second athlete is running downfield, where eventually both will collide. On the other hand, perhaps athlete one and athlete two are running upfield where athlete will surpass if he hasn't already athlete two and reach the opposite end of the field first. In both of these scenarios, knowing speed and direction gives us the vector of the athletes. Another situation where utilizing vectors over just knowing speed or distance traveled is during lifts and training. If we have two athletes squatting 300 pounds, typically we would be fairly happy with that display of strength. However, we must also take into account how well the athlete moved that way as well. This is where vectors play a role. Athlete one, let's say, is squatting with pretty decent form where feet, knees, and hips are all in alignment throughout the full range of motion. Athlete two, however, does not perform the same way. When athlete two squats down, he slowly shifts his weight over to his dominant leg. For this scenario, let's make it his left leg then comes back up with a higher percentage of his weight on that left leg. Not only does this become an issue from a muscular development as well as a neurological standpoint, but it's also an issue when we look at the movement from a mathematical perspective. The barbell squat has been exercised to help improve vertical strength and power, especially off two feet. Bilateral strength and power can be crucial when we talk about a basketball player going up for a contested dunk, a football player going for an interception, or a soccer player going for a header. Therefore, performing the barbell squat with equal contribution from both legs is vital for the greatest carryover. Now, when we compare the vectors between athlete one and two, we know that with athlete one, the starting point of between the feet to the final direction is a perfectly vertical line. With athlete two, though, this is not the case. The vector begins between the feet and goes up and to the left. Using your own intuition for this case, which athlete would you say is more efficient? Which athlete is less? As you probably have guessed, athlete two is less efficient. In terms of total work done, both athletes do the same, but athlete two took a longer path. We have to take into account not only the vertical distance that athlete two covered, which in this scenario is 12 inches, but the lateral distance as well. The lateral distance covered by shifting the weight was six inches. When we do the math then, using Pythagorean theorem, we see that athlete two covered up to 12% more distance than athlete one. More distance covered can mean more energy expended. And when we take into account that we perform four sets of 10 reps, that horizontal distance and greater energy expended adds up pretty fast up to 480% more distance covered to do the same amount of work. This is why understanding the math behind the details is critical. Now going a step further, the deviation of lateral movement opens up the door to an imbalance of strengthening one leg over the other. If this were the intended purpose of the exercise, that'd be one thing. But as mentioned before, we want to improve vertical strength and power off two feet. Now, within research that tested one versus two-legged jumps, it was shown that the two-legged running vertical jump resulted in a statistically significant greater jump height than the one-legged running vertical jump. 
Again, when we go back to shifting of the hips to one side, the bilateral squat becomes more of a unilateral exercise because of the favoring of one side. Now, having an understanding of how we can not only apply vectors to training, but why they are important to consider when training, we are able to implement vectors to specific movements so that we can effectively improve performance of our clients so that they may move more efficiently. With everything we do in training, remember to identify what the problem we want to solve, include our known and unknown variables in the person being trained, and state our desired outcome. Like a simple addition problem, improving our abilities as trainers requires us to be step-by-step -step problem solvers.